It never fails. I've lived in the Midwest nearly my entire life, and I know that you're pressing your luck to plan to travel anywhere between Thanksgiving and Tax Day. It's the stretch of time each year where the lawnmower is put away and the snowblower is on standby. In the same way that washing your car causes it to rain, putting an important event on the calendar during those five months almost guarantees an ice storm or a blizzard. Up until 2019, I'd been pretty lucky traveling around the Midwest in the middle of winter. In fact, the entire reason I'm sitting in the car in Mount Pleasant, Iowa during an ice storm in order to catch a train to Chicago goes back to February 2017 in Decatur, Illinois. I took part in Startup Weekend Decatur that year because friends I'd made in the startup ecosystem in Eastern Iowa were running the event, and I have a bit of a Startup Weekend addiction. I've attended Startup Weekend events all over Iowa and Illinois, and this time around, I thought it'd be fun to pitch an idea of my own rather than jumping on someone else's team. Through sheer luck, my idea made it all the way through the idea storm on Friday evening, and I was able to form a team to work on the project all weekend. My original idea focused on beer, but my team quickly found out that the beer tech landscape is pretty full. One of my teammates suggested that we look into hard cider as our focus area. I wasn't too familiar with the cider market at the time, but my teammates had some connections, so we ran with it. By the end of the event, we had birthed Cider Finder, and I walked away with a very close second place and an Amazon Fire tablet. For most of 2017 and 2018, I put Cider Finder on the back burner to work on other projects, including reviving Startup Weekend Iowa City back in 2018. Fast forward two years, and I'm aboard the California Zephyr, heading east to Chicago for CiderCon 2019 at the Chicago Hilton. CiderCon is the largest cider industry trade show in the United States, and it's where I plan to spend several days interacting directly with cider makers and cider enthusiasts to see if the Cider Finder app concept has any takers. I'd done the market research and talked to some friends who enjoyed cider on occasion, but I'd never had the chance to talk directly with cidery owners and the people who make the drinks we all love. Sitting on that train, I had no idea how much I was going to learn during the next few days and how many great new friends I was going to make along the way. I hope you enjoy this journey along with me. My name is Jay Cooper, and I'm the CEO and founder of Cider Finder, an app designed to bring cider makers and enthusiasts a little bit closer. I'm on a journey around the United States to meet cider makers, visit cideries, find fans of hard cider, and learn as much as I can about one of the strongest segments of the alcohol industry in this country. Come along with me on my travels from coast to coast as I attend the biggest events in hard cider in America to learn as much as I can about the industry and all of the steps between fruit on tree and liquid in bottle. There's a lot more going on behind the curtain than you realize. I'm on a quest to learn everything I possibly can and become the Cider Finder. Hi everyone. <laughs> so we're trying this out. We're gonna see how this works. <sighs> so this is it, day one, cider con. It hasn't started just yet, uh, but I got got my badge, so that's all set up. Um, I got a good night of sleep last night. Um, still got a little bit of the creeping crud that my kids gave me. Um, last week when we were all stuck inside during the polar vortex. That was really, really unpleasant. But that's gone and now we've had a couple days of freezing rain. It's just regular rain here in Chicago. Um, but back in Iowa, my car is probably covered in at least half, uh, half an inch of ice sitting in Mount Pleasant. So that's fantastic. Um, construction going on behind me. Um, I do have a room that that has an oblique view of Lake Michigan, which is really cool. I'm at the Hilton in Chicago. So yeah, this is day one, CiderCon. Hasn't started just yet. In about half an hour or so, um, they'll have the kickoff, uh, I don't know, keynote or whatever, um, for roughly an hour. And then we'll get into the small sessions. It's also Chicago uh, Cider Week, or Cider Week Chicago. It's also Chicago Restaurant Week. 
So the goal, I guess, of this week is to make everyone obese. <laughs> That's everyone's plan this week. So uh, there's good food, good drink, and uh, good folks downstairs. So um, just a few minutes, I'm going to head downstairs and uh, hopefully make some new friends. When I got off the elevator in the lobby, I made my way past the check-in station and into the main ballroom. There weren't too many people in the ballroom just yet, so I found a table with a couple of other people already sitting there and introduced myself. The keynote address highlighted the growth in the cider industry and the challenges that the alcohol industry has faced over the last few years. Growth has stalled out overall, but cider has continued to grow by leaps and bounds, chipping away at other segments of the industry. My team hadn't been able to find this information during Startup Weekend Decatur, so I made sure to put this information into the Cider Finder pitch deck. Breakout sessions followed, including the one I attended on direct-to-consumer sales laws. Thanks to Prohibition, the United States is under a patchwork of alcohol sales laws, and you have to know the laws in each state, or hire counsel that does. When we eventually sell cider through the Cider Finder app, I want to make sure that we're staying compliant with both local and federal laws. Over the course of CiderCon, I had a chance to spend some time in the trade show area in the basement of the hotel. Most of the goods being shown off at the trade show were specifically for cider makers. Automated cider presses, bottling and canning machines, financial instruments for orchard and cidery owners, and glassware for the tap room. I kept some information from a couple of the glassware makers for future reference. I might want to order some cider finder glasses in the future. So that we weren't completely sloshed by dinner time, the lunches and all of the snacks served during the convention were of the carbohydrate and fatty variety. Lunch during the first day was fried chicken and potatoes, and during the tastings through the two days of CiderCon, there was always some sort of bread or cracker available. Granted, it's not like we were downing a pint of cider at a time. The tastings involved one or two ounces of each sample, which was enough to get the taste and experience the characteristics of each cider. Speaking of tastings, I attended my first professional tasting after lunch. The panel discussion was on four different natural ciders, three from the United States, Art and Science from Oregon, Sunstrom Cider from New York, and Fable Farm Fermentary from Vermont, plus a sample of sea cider out of British Columbia, Canada. Natural ciders are named because there is no or very minimal intervention in their production. The three American samples were quite funky and reminded me a bit of farmhouse ales from my past beer adventures. The Canadian entry was much smoother and had been cellared since 2012. I had no idea what the tasting was going to be like, and I'm glad that I was able to grab a ticket to that event. At the end of the first day, many attendees gathered around the Michigan Cider Association trailer, which had about a dozen different ciders from Michigan, being dispensed as samples for free. This was the perfect opportunity to talk with cider makers one-on-one -on -one in a comfortable setting. A number of cider makers gave me their information, and I've had the chance to talk with them since the event on how to improve the Cider Finder app for cider makers. During the happy hour, I also had the chance to talk with some of the organizers of the Great Lakes International Cider and Perry Competition. Hundreds of ciders from across the world are judged during the two days of Glint Cap. Both professionals and home brewers are able to submit samples to be judged, and it takes an army of volunteers to make the event happen each year. I gave them my contact information and told them I was really, really interested in helping wherever I could at the event later in the year. This is the morning of day two. Um, didn't get around to doing one of these last night like I thought I was going to. I ended up staying out till about midnight last night. It was a lot of fun. Uh, got connected with a couple folks from the East Coast, um, one of whom uh, does a cider podcast. So I um, was glad to connect with her and learn more about her. And, um, ended up eating some goat because <laughs> why not <laughs> uh yeah that was a it was a interesting dinner it was delicious um i don't know what i was expecting <laughs> certainly wasn't expecting it to taste like i don't know it almost tasted tasted somewhere in between beef and turkey <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know, it was good. It was this, 
Evidently, they cooked a whole goat at this restaurant called Twain. Uh, it's northwest of the hotel here um, by a few miles. So we took a cab up there and, um, yeah, <laughs> very interesting. We, we walked in. It's evidently a brand new restaurant. Uh, walked in there and uh, there are three big bottles um, just sitting on this table. Evidently, um, all three of them had cider in them. So we, we, we tasted, I tasted one of them. My, uh, my two dinner companions had something from all three of them. Um, because at that point I'd been testing ciders pretty much all day. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do today too. You know, not sitting there drinking, you know, a pint at a time. It's, you get these, basically it's a, practically a thimble. It's maybe an ounce at a time. Um, just to get different flavor profiles and um, different, you know, it's, it's run the whole spectrum from your standard sweet, what you buy at the grocery store sort of stuff, all the way up to this really funky, um, kind of, I guess a good analog would be like a, a farmhouse ale or a, a wild ale sort of thing. Um, on the beer side. So a lot of, uh, I went to a natural cider tasting and that's where I got to taste a lot of that stuff. Most of the, most of the samples that were in the, um, in the trade show were more of the standard, you know, dry to sweet, uh, sort of profiles. None of the really weird experimental stuff. It was most of, Hey, here's what's the most commercially popular, from us or here's what won a gold medal at glint cap or that sort of thing today should be a lot of fun um going to a testing uh tasting first thing this morning so we'll see how that goes um i think there's uh there's programming over lunch and the uh sessions this afternoon afternoon look pretty interesting so um looking forward to those looking forward to the final toast with the canadians uh, between five and six this evening, or four to five, it's the it's the very last thing this evening, um, and then there's parties and after parties and all of that, and then uh, cider summit over at Navy Pier tomorrow morning, um, which it sounds like a good majority of the folks who are attending this week, uh, attending CiderCon this week, are going to be going to Navy Pier on Saturday. The second day of CiderCon 2019 was all about tasting events. I attended one in the morning and one to round out the afternoon. The morning session focused on small cider makers and how they can produce amazing cider while staying small. While the focus of Cider Finder is broadened beyond small cider makers, we believe the smallest cideries can benefit the most from our app. The largest cider makers, much like the largest beer and wine outfits, have the benefit of scale, funding, and search engine optimization for people to find their product. The smallest cider makers don't have those kinds of resources at their disposal. We're hoping to help them even that playing field. Four different ciders were featured in the How to Stay Small tasting panel. Foxwelp from Alpenfire out of Washington State, Cinderella's Slipper from Vermont's Eden Cider, Hollow Bottom from New York's East Hollow Cider, and Old World Winery's Trowbridge Lot 15 from California. Each of the ciders had their own unique characteristics and their own style. For example, Eden focuses on ice ciders, which are like the cider equivalent of dessert wines. The other three ciders were more natural ciders and tasted much like the ciders on the panel I attended during the first day of CiderCon. Good luck finding any of these ciders now, however. There's one thing that makes small cider makers amazing that also makes them kind of frustrating, the small quantities of cider they produce. All of these ciders had limited production, either because they were single varietal, apples that were foraged from ditches and roadsides, or are produced in a way that is incredibly difficult or impossible to reproduce. While you may not be able to obtain these ciders this far into the future, you should experience other products by these cider makers. After another delicious lunch, I attended my final tasting session entitled Perfect Pairings. Of all the tastings I attended, this seemed to be the most popular, based on the number of people looking to find tickets into the meeting room. Those of us who made it into the room were not at all disappointed by the choices of cider and their accompanying dishes. There were four different dishes and ciders. A pork loin and sweet potato puree paired with a hopped cider, scallops paired with a dry cider, chicken with a mole sauce paired with a spiced cider, 
and key lime cheesecake paired with a rosé cider. I thought going into the tasting that I'd like the pork loin and the hopped cider the best, but I ended up ranking that dish and cider combination last of the four. My favorite of the bunch was the chicken paired with the spiced cider. I thought that the mole sauce tasted a bit like my homemade chili, which means that it would be relatively easy to reproduce the tastes if I'm able to get the same or similar cider. The seared scallops with the dry cider were a close second place. This cider could also pair with whitefish, as was done for the woman sitting to my right, who had a shellfish allergy. Overall, my main takeaway from the session is that cider pairing has a great deal of overlap with wine pairing. Following the cider and food pairing session, all of the attendees made their way back to the main ballroom for the final toast featuring Canadian cider makers. I ended up sharing a table with a bunch of folks from Chain Yard Cider out of Halifax, Nova Scotia. I talked with them earlier in the week about what the cider industry is like in Canada and how much use Cider Finder would be in their market. Canada wasn't originally in my plans for the app, but the more I've looked into it, the more that other parts of the world could benefit from what I'm building. What a great way to end the convention. This is day three. Um, it was a long night last night, but uh, again, had a lot of fun, uh, learned a lot of stuff yesterday, and uh, yeah, a lot of, met a lot of really cool folks, both yesterday and the day before. Even though CiderCon wrapped up on Friday afternoon, I stuck around Chicago an extra day to attend the Cider Summit at Navy Pier on Saturday afternoon. A number of people who attended CiderCon stuck around Friday night and Saturday to enjoy Chicago Cider Week and Chicago Restaurant Week, both of which overlap with CiderCon in 2019. I ended up going to the Northman for dinner and drinks on Friday evening, including one of their Spanish-style ciders poured in the traditional style with my glass near the floor, catching the stream of ciders that poured from the carafe. Since I visited the Northman, they've closed the bar and moved their operations to their new Riverwalk location right in the heart of Chicago. I decided to get a VIP ticket to the Cider Summit so I could get in an hour early and have a bit more time to experience the event and all of the cider contained within. There were two levels of vendors, mostly cider makers sampling their wares, but a couple of food and swag vendors as well. I saw a few of the other CiderCon attendees there once the regular ticket holders were admitted. A couple of CiderCon attendees were volunteering at the session I attended so they could get into the second session for free. Had I known that was an option, I would have done that. Good to know if CiderCon and Cider Summit overlap in Chicago or elsewhere in the future. Many of the cider companies sampling their goods were either from the Chicagoland area or from areas close by like Wisconsin or Michigan. I didn't see any cider companies from Iowa. Perhaps they aren't distributing to Chicago yet due to the size of the market. Being a complete novice in the world of cider, I hadn't sampled anything from most of the cideries at the event. My favorite was Starcut Cider's Mosa, a cider with orange juice in the style of a mimosa. The closest cider I've had to Mosa since Cider Summit is Wilson Cider's Mimosa Style Cider, made here in Eastern Iowa. Like any tasting event, I wish Cider Summit had been an hour or so longer. However, I was starting to run out of tickets with about half an hour left to go in the event, so everything was timed out pretty perfectly. What a great way to end the week. So we finally reached the end of uh, the week of CiderCon and Cider Summit, and this was a lot of fun. It was an amazing experience, amazing conference, um, amazing, uh, amazing group of folks at uh, the Cider Summit yesterday. And I'll go through that a little bit more um, in just a minute. But uh, no, just this was this was definitely worth coming for this, just to meet the folks that are making the cider, meet the folks that are influential in the industry. Of course, getting to try a countless number of ciders over the course of three days. Um, really putting myself at the epicenter of the cider industry. And that's something I need to do in order to know what folks want, what folks need with an app like Cider Finder. It started to snow before I got on the California Zephyr, heading west out of Chicago's Union Station, back toward Mount Pleasant. The view was much prettier than it had been coming into Chicago, in the rain and in the dark. We were also on time as we traveled west, as opposed to the multi-hour delay going east in the last leg of the train's three-day journey from California to the Midwest. CiderCon was a resounding success and the Cider Summit was a lot of fun. I had the chance to connect with so many different cider makers and finally make some progress on validating my idea with the people who truly matter. 
In addition, I learned a great deal about the cider industry and got a chance to try some of the best ciders out there. The great part is that this was just the beginning. Over these next episodes, you'll follow me across the United States to places I've never been in search of ciders I've never tried. I'll make the trip to Grand Rapids, Michigan for the Great Lakes International Cider and Perry Competition, to New England for Franklin County Cider Days, and out west to Oakland, California for CiderCon 2020. We'll see new sites, meet new people, and I'll show you some of the best ciders our country has to offer. I hope you're up for the ride.